Today I'm having a quick look at the Lenovo P620 workstation. Uh, this is an interesting machine because it's the only machine that you can buy that features AMD's new Threadripper Pro CPUs. This one's equipped with a 3975WX, so let's take a look at the machine and see how that CPU performs. The Lenovo P620 features one of Lenovo's fairly standard ThinkStation cases. Uh, I quite like it, it's fairly small for a workstation case and, and quite slim. Uh, I like the carry handle here at the front. And then we've got this uh, front panel here. Uh, this particular machine is equipped with a DVD rewriter. Uh, does anyone still use those? Uh, and a, a memory card slot. Uh, we've also then got the uh, USB ports on the front here, the power switch, and there's a diagnostic LED, which as you can see, as you boot up the machine, it shows various different codes. Uh, so if you had a problem with your machine, it would be easy to diagnose. Uh, the four USB ports are USB 3.2 generation two, so that's 10 gigabits per second, and you've got two type A ports and two type C ports. Uh, let's spin the case around and see what we've got on the back. So starting at the top here, we've got our standard audio inputs and outputs, and then we've got two PS2 ports. Remember those? Uh, if you've got a PS2 keyboard or mouse kicking around, you'll be able to use it with this machine. Uh, next we have two USB 2.0 ports for things like keyboard and mice again, uh, and then four more of those USB 3.2 generation two type A ports, so 10 gigabits per second. Then we have an uh, onboard ethernet, and this is 10 gigabit ethernet, which is really nice to see. Uh, this particular computer is equipped with a Quadro RTX 5000 card, and that has four DisplayPort outputs and a USB-C output. And then at the bottom we've got our power supply, which in this case is 1000 watts Platinum Plus rated. Gaining access to the inside of the machine is really easy. We just uh, press here, and use the handle, and we can open up the case. And what you'll notice is on the back of the case we've got a sticker printed with the motherboard layout and a diagram of what all the components are. That's uh, really useful to have. Uh, so again, let's uh, start at the top and work our way down. We've got the Threadripper Pro CPU here underneath these two heat sinks and two fans. Now, when you first fire up the computer, this uh, spins the fans right up and it's very noisy. Uh, in normal use though, you'll never get it up to that level, I wouldn't have thought, unless you're doing something incredibly intensive. And it does quiet down as soon as you've booted up into Windows. You'll notice above and below the CPU, we've got banks of DIMM slots. There are eight altogether. And this is uh, taking DDR4 3200 error checking RAM. That's something that AMD added to the Threadripper Pro, that ability to have ECC RAM. And you can spec this with either 16 gigs, 32 gigs, or 64 gig DIMMs. Uh, in this case, we've got eight 16 gig DIMMs, so 128 gigs of RAM. So the maximum you could go up to would be 512 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the Threadripper Pro itself can support more memory than that, but uh, Lenovo just don't allow you to configure it on their website. Uh, there's space for two M.2 NVMe drives on board, and these fit underneath this heatsink just above the graphics card. It's very easy to add another SSD. You just uh, turn a, a thumb screw and lift up that heatsink. It's got a thermal pad on the underside, and if you only order the computer with one uh, SSD from the factory, it's very easy just to add a second in. It comes with PCIe 3.0 SSDs though. Uh, it will support the 4.0 SSDs, but for some reason Lenovo doesn't ship those uh, with the machine. Uh, as you can see, we've got the Quadro RTX 5000 card in, and it's got a, a bracket here, which slides into this slot to keep the card stable and avoid overstressing the PCIe socket. And once this card is installed, we can still access uh, two of the X16 sockets and two X8 sockets. So plenty of upgradability with this computer. The power supply, as we said, is 1000 watts Platinum Plus, so there's plenty of uh, juice there for additional cards if you want them. Uh, I believe you can spec this with three RTX 4000s or two RTX 5000s, and then there's also the 6000 and 8000 options if you've got money to burn. Uh, you'll notice also we've got a caddy here for two three and a half inch hard drives, although the caddy does also have uh, mounting holes for two and a half inch drives. And you get the SATA cables to go with it. In this case, we've got uh, two of the SATA cables spare for those uh, drive slots, and we've got one running up to that DVD rewriter. If you order more drives uh, from the factory, you'll get a second caddy over here, so a total of four hard drives in there. And you'll notice on the board, there are six SATA slots in total, so we've got three spare on this machine, 
Uh, so plenty of upgradability again if you can find somewhere to mount your drives. Overall this is a really nicely put together workstation, the thermals have been well thought about. Uh, the graphics card is a blower style card so it's venting through the uh, back of the machine. Uh, and I forgot to say actually the front panel has a speaker in it as well. Uh, nothing high fidelity but it's a useful thing to have. So a nice setup, it's all toolless, very easy to upgrade parts. Um, you know, plenty of future proofing going on with this machine. Uh, but let's dig into that Threadripper Pro CPU, the 3975WX. Uh, let's have a look at how it performs in some benchmarks. So I haven't done any particularly in-depth testing on this machine, but uh, I did run Geekbench 5 just to see how it scores. Uh, firstly, on single core performance, it's uh, 1289. Uh, now that's not the fastest single core performance out there, certainly not as fast as the latest uh, Ryzen processors. However, for a workstation class CPU, that is quick. Uh, it's certainly faster for single core than say the 28 core Xeon, such as you might find in the 2019 Mac Pro. And the multi-core score is quite impressive. 28,313, uh, that's just huge. Again, referencing that 28 core Xeon, that uh, scores just below 20,000 on average. So, to get 28,313 just shows you that this is a, a step up from that CPU. And here is where you get the benefit of the Threadripper Pro, because it's a single CPU socket system. To get the same performance with Intel Xeon, you would need a dual CPU system. And bear in mind, this is the 3975, which is the 32 core 64 thread processor. There's also the 3995, which is 64 cores and 128 threads. And what this means is that you can get massive value into this system because there's one CPU socket. So the cost is less overall and it outperforms uh, the best of Intel when it comes to a single CPU computer. Uh, something else I tried was uh, a run in Cinebench R23, the multi-threaded test. Uh, and in 10 minutes, it managed to do 31 passes, which is pretty incredible. Uh, the score was 40,791. Uh, that is absolutely massive, and uh, it's pretty impressive as you can see on the screen. It, it just obliterates this test. Uh, interestingly, the previous uh, Threadripper 32 core, that's the 2990WX, scores 30,000 in this test. So again, it's a big step up over the previous generation. Uh, so AMD's new Threadripper Pros really do offer a professional solution. And if you're in the market for a very fast single CPU workstation, uh, the Lenovo P620 is probably something worth having a look at. Uh, that's it for our quick look at this machine today. A very interesting workstation with a phenomenal CPU, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, I'd like to do some more deep testing with this machine. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to do that and bring another video to the channel. If you'd like to see that video, please support the channel with just one click of that subscribe button. And hopefully I did enough to earn a thumbs up today, or a thumbs down if you're feeling so inclined. In any case, hope to see you next time for some more geekery.